Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you to this channel. Uh, in, this is a short video I am making on uh, a chance meeting that I had with the Lama when I visited Sarnath in late September 2023 and uh, what lessons he taught me. So just, uh, it's a short video that I want to share my experiences. I have made a separate two videos on my Sarnath visit, Sarnath visit part 1, Sarnath visit part 2. So if any of you want to go to Sarnath, uh, you can check those videos and it's a must visit place if you are a serious follower of the Buddha. This is the place, Sarnath is a place for those who don't know. Sarnath is uh, uh, the place where Buddha gave the first uh, uh, sermon uh, after his enlightenment. Uh, he gave the first sermon to the five disciples after enlightenment. So had, it had, this place has a lot of spiritual energy and spiritual significance. It's one of the four places that Buddha asked his followers to go. So first was Bodh Gaya, second was Sarnath. Bodh Gaya is where uh, Buddha got, uh, so first is Lumini, which is where Buddha got enlightenment. Second is uh, uh, Bodh Gaya, where Buddha got, uh, first Lumini, where Buddha got birth. Second is uh, Bodh Gaya, where Buddha got enlightenment. Third is Sarnath, where Buddha delivered the first sermon. Fourth is Kushinagra, where Buddha achieved Parinirvana. Right? So these are the four places. Okay, let's, so let's start this video. Uh, so why I went to Sarnath as I had told in that video also is that I got a very strong kind of a, so I practice Akashic records and I, I got a very strong uh, uh, push that it is in my sole purpose to uh, spread Buddha's teachings and this happened two years back uh, and uh, visit Sarnath, right? that was was coming in the reading. So I kind of resisted that advice because I was not sure whether I was ready for this work. So after two years of resisting, I finally made, a, made it, I visited Sarnath. And in that reading, when before, before uh, I visited Sarnath, there was a, also, I did a reading where it, there was this thing that uh, you will find a, a, a person uh, who will give you some profound advice. And this was exactly what, what happened. So when I went there and there was this, I just made a few points so that I do not miss out any of the learnings that he has given me. Uh, one of the temples, so I will not reveal his name, identity and everything. So let's keep that as a, you know, aside, right? So in one of the temples that I visited, uh, so there are various, you know, monasteries and temples in Sarnath. So one of the temples, or monasteries that I visited, you know, uh, uh, there was just, I, I, I visited that monastery. I, I uh, did my uh, prostrations and I meditated for like 5-10 minutes and that Lama was there. He was just, uh, you know, I could see him. He was just there sitting somewhere. And uh, when I was just leaving, that Lama was like coming to me and uh, he said, where from you are? I said, I'm from Indore. Uh, and, uh, and he said, he just started a conversation. And I don't know after that what happened. He just started giving knowledge. Right? This did not happen to me in any of the other monasteries, any of the other temples in the cross the Sarnath that I visited. And he started just sharing with me certain knowledge. So I just made some points. So first thing was that he was a bit lamenting about, you know, he was very kind of a la lamenting uh, about uh, the monks in that temple. So what he said that, you know, uh, so I don't know why he said that because I think there was this thing that I need to know. You know, I was very fascinated about monks and, you know, the robes and all those things. And I always thought that, you know, leave everything and, you know, go and attend, you know, go and become a monk because I have... From uh, my, I'm also a past life regression therapist. So from my, I have seen my own past life where I have been a monk, becoming trained as a monk, as a robes and everything. So I have had a lot of fascination about monks when I see the robes and everything. So he said that, you know, the monks in that temple, they, he said that they themselves don't follow the precepts. They are just like there, the donations are coming and they are just there. So I'm, so again, just... To clarify, I'm not saying this about the entire Sangha community or monks community, not at all, right? It's just that for that particular uh, monk was sharing the kind of a, the dark side of the, you know, the part of this thing that, you know, monks. And he said that they do not even follow the precepts. And he said that he is just there as a caretaker. So he has to just take care of them. But there is no one to teach them also. No one comes in that monastery to teach them, guide them on the Buddha's precepts. So that, you know, when I heard that the realization struck on me, that number one is that, you know, I am better off who I am in my family life. I do not need to kind of become a monk and then, then do the work, the Buddha's, uh, follow the Buddha's teaching. 
Buddha's teaching is, and this is what Buddha also I read in the Dhammapad. I have made a detailed videos on Dhammapad. You can check the Dhammapad playlist. Buddha said, the real monk is who follows my dharma. And Buddha does, didn't say that, you know, monk has to be a person who is living alone in a monastery and, you know, secluded and all. Buddha said, real monk, real bhikkhu is the person who is following my dharma. The way that I have taught the, 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 no, the five precepts. The people who follow that, they are the... It's not only that if you wear the robe and then, then only you are a monk. Then only... So that was like a big realization. My entire fascination about these monks and everything that, that, that went. So I understand there are definitely specific benefits into being a full-time practice. But at least then you practice. No. If you're, if you're in a monastery, if you're in such a sacred place, then you practice. There is no point just being there and not practicing. Better than that, I am in my family life with all the family tensions and everything. Still, I am able to practice whatever I can. That, that, that was the first. And what he said, and he said that, you know, it has become a business now, right? Uh, this whole setting up the monasteries and then collecting donations and all. So, I am not saying that this is, happens everywhere. But he told me about the, the dark side. Maybe I wanted to know. I, uh, maybe I had to know this because this fascination was there too much about, you know, in me about, you know, uh, just laying, staying secluded and I thought that is the only way where I can practice. So that was a naivety on my part, but that got cleared in that when he said that. So he, he said again, very important thing is do not rely on anyone else. Be your own savior. And this is what Buddha's teaching was that do not rely on, you know, uh, on anyone else, any teacher, any teacher will come and give you instruction. You start, no. This is how I am doing. This is how, what this channel, I am not uh, saying I am enlightened and I am, I am a learner on this journey of Buddha teachings. I am sharing my learnings. I am learning and sharing. Similarly, you can, there are so many good books that are available. Start learning. There are so many websites like suttacentral.net. Those websites are available where all discourses are given. Just, you have to put, we have to be resourceful. We cannot rely on some teacher or someone who comes and gives the instruction. If we do that, and I have had this mindset, then we will keep, we will be at this level. Right? So take Buddha as your teacher. Take refuge in the triple gem. Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. Take refuge in number one, the Buddha as your teacher. Take refuge in the Dharma. And take refuge in the Sangha. If you get a spiritual community, good. But don't let a spiritual community not existing. In So example, where I live, and this is the sad part of, you know, being in a country where Buddha got enlightenment. There is no communities. There are no spiritual communities practiced. Buddhism is not, virtually not practiced. That's the sad part in India. Right? So, if you are also living in a place where there are no Sangha, there are no spiritual community, take refuge in the Buddha. Start practicing. Start reading the discourses. Start uh, five precepts. Noble Eightfold Path. That is the teaching. Start practicing meditation. Who is stopping you from practicing meditation? Who is stopping us from becoming our own savior? And that is what Buddha asked us to do. So that was one. Then he said, he was saying that I am just waiting for my death. I am just still do, doing my, taking care of the duties. So he was like virtually dis, disattached. Disattached is not the right word. Unattached to anything else. He was just saying that I am just taking care of this monastery. I am just waiting for my death. Right? That one day I will you know, uh, die and everything will be over. So I'm just, so what the understanding realization is just be detached, right? There are various pulls, there are various fetters, the chains of family, friends, career, relationships, you know, all these things, the religion, religion also binds people. Just don't, see, be in them. If we are living a worldly life, we have to be in them, all these things. We cannot run away from them. But do not get bound by them. At least we can keep our mind free. Be detached. So love your child, love your spouse. But don't live, love them too much that you become, become so attached to them. Buddha said, attachment be, creates suffering. Love everyone. Take care of everyone. But don't get attached. Do not find your happiness in any person or object. Why? Because everything is impermanent. Everything is changing. This is Buddha's core teaching. When everything is changing, your attachment towards a specific thing, or object in this creation, in this samsara, will keep you bound in this cycle of samsara. So that was my 
realization. Then I said, uh, I do Vipassana meditation. So he said, I guess that you are doing the way you are meditating and you know, so, so he said, I could guess. So he said, just continue your Vipassana. Vipassana is insight meditation. In English, it is insight. You can check out my video on insight meditation that I have made and how to practice insight meditation. You can check that video. This is insight is the direct path of liberation. It is based on the Satipatthana Sutra given by the Buddha and where he has stated, where Buddha has stated, it's the direct path of liberation, right? So in unequivocal words, Buddha has stated that. So Buddha said, so uh, the monk said, the Lama said, he said, keep, keep on continuing on that path. Do not break, do not break. And that is what actually the teaching in the inside meditation is that I follow the Mahasi Shadow's uh, 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 tradition. Uh, there is also the Goenka tradition which you can follow. Uh, so, in, in, important essential thing is that do not break. Make it more strong. It's like, it's like when you light a fire, you need to rub two sticks continuously, continuously, continuously till the fire spark comes. That is how our practice has to be. If we put break on our practice like I practice and then I stop my practice and then I start a week later. N no, just follow that path and follow that path and and you will see the result right so that was that was my advice that i got then he also gave me an advice that when you sit in meditation just go in universe antriksh antriksh is the hindi word of universe you know it's like i related to the osho's advice that you know shunyata mein doob jao just get drowned in the zero zero shunyata emptiness right so that was another advice he gave then he said about this thing that mind is precedes everything else a person who goes into Himalayas and does the sadhana, does his practice. After some time, he gets bored by Himalayas also. So I have this fascination about Tibet and all, you know, these places and, you know, Arunachal Pradesh and monasteries in Ladakh and Arunachal. So what he said, if you sit in your room, you close the room, just turn off the lights and just think that you are, you don't need to turn off the lights. It's just uh, what he said. It's, you don't need. So... Just think of that place as the Himalayas. Your mind is what, you know, just have it in your mind that I am, that mind, I am in the Himalayas. It's not that you have to go there because even if you go there, you will get bored. So think of the, uh, so that is, a, there is a very good saying that uh, by Thich Nhat Hanh, the Buddhist monk, Zen master, he said that when you meditate and sit for meditation, think that you are the Buddha who is sitting under the Bodhi tree. How beautiful is that? And Thich Nhat Hanh said, we can all be part-time Buddhas. The moment that I sit in my meditation, that I am the Buddha who is sitting in the, in the... We can all, at that moment, when I am present, I am the Buddha. Buddha is not a person who came and you know went 2600 years ago. We all, when we are present, Buddha is with us. We are the Buddha. So he said, so uh, uh, Thai said, is that we can all be part-times. Yes, we cannot be full-time Buddhas, uh, but we can definitely all be part-time Buddhas. Right? So, so that then he said the very important thing about nature, that learn from nature. Nature can teach you so much. Right? Nature can teach you so about impermanence, suffering and non-self. Nature can teach you. And when he told me, after that, you know, uh, I, I was attending the uh, that same day in the evening, I was attending the 6.30pm, uh, 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 the chanting of the Dhamma Chakra Pavartan Sutra, the first sermon in the Sarna temple. And there, you know, there was, you know, uh, it was raining and there was just clouds that were flowing by and I was waiting for the chantings to start. So we have to wait for half an hour. So we have to enter before 6 and then wait for the half an hour. I was just gazing at the clouds and I was just realizing that this is what the nature is telling me. It's all just moving. We are all like clouds. Everything in this creation is like a cloud. Everything is just moving. Right? So that realization and nature can teach us so much. The flowers, they grow and they wither. Everything grows. I become old. You become old. So think of a friend that you meet after 20 years. You see his face all wrinkled. This is all the change that is happening. We... When we are not mindful, then we do not realize 
the, this change, this impermanence. But when we are mindful, it's like said, uh, one of the teachers, I, I listened to a quote, I heard a quote from one of the teachers, when you are mindful, everything becomes your teacher. And this is so true. Because in the smallest of things, you will start finding the lessons. Right? So nature, is there is another, uh, another uh, 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 web series, uh, Bandish Bandits in Hindi. Uh, there also, you know, the person was learning music. So her mother, the, that person's mother, his mother was teaching her, him music. And she said, look at the nature's sounds. And nature can tell you music more than anything. Nature has its own rhythm. So we need to start being in nature, looking into this nature with mindful eyes, mindful ears. And we can learn a lot from nature. So that was there. Then he said, feed animals, feed the nature, take care of this nature. Feed animals, birds, it will give you merit. Right? So, and that what happened is that now the, the beautiful thing that was happened is after we had this conversation of 15 20 minutes, and I went and I didn't ask him about his name who, and contact numbers and everything. Nothing I asked him. He met me second day. Again, after I did the chanting of the uh, the same day, later, later in the same day, uh, when I heard the chanting, I uh, met him. I met him and he was feeding dogs and, you know, he was feeding the dogs. So he was actually practicing what he said, ki feed dogs, you know, feed, help, take care of nature. And then I met him once again uh, in the second chanting after at 6.30 p.m. Second day, I again met him. So there were like three times I met that, that Lama. So it could not be a coincidence. And at the second meeting, I asked him about his name and his number. And he said uh, that beta, I do not, beta is like son. I do not uh, use phone. I do not use phone so much. But this is my number. You can call me and, you know, we can exchange greetings on maybe Buddha Purnima or any other occasion. So that was there. Then, uh, then he just said, just be a single person practicing dharma. It's between you and the dharma. Don't create two words. Don't try to you know, uh, get into too much confusions and in this life only, only just to put the effort to liberate yourself, right? Do not think the liberation is very far away. Even, he said, even if you develop, devote this, this life well, very deeply into this, you can liberate yourself in this very life. So don't get stuck in too many things now. So, what my learning was, in my 18 year spiritual journey, I have, you know, learned a lot of things, lot of healing modalities and what it helped me is that I got a well-rounded perspective on a lot of things. But once you reach at this place, the Buddha's teachings and enlightened master who shows a clear path through Satipatthana is the insight path. Just then follow the teachings, then, then don't get too much involved here and there. Right? So, so that was the realization. So yeah, so this is it. This is it. I have just shared. I hope even a one person gets benefited from my sharing. My work of, of making this video uh, is, is done. So, uh, I just thought to make this video. Uh, if you have any comments, thoughts, sharing, do share in the comment section. I will be more, more than happy to uh, read them. Uh, thank you so much. And I wish you all the best for your practice. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.